Well, I want to just say this as I welcome you tonight. We need authority. Authority is probably the most misunderstood word in many ways in the church uh, today. It's one of the most misunderstood things. We think authority, we think put you in a position of power. It's a very strange thing. If I say authority, you say, what does that mean? A position of power. Now, it's very, very interesting. And I want to just knock on this for a minute. And it's interesting. In the Bible, if you say authority, we say position of power. What's interesting about that is it's the opposite of power in a sense. In a way, the Bible's version of authority and our version of authority, it gets lost what the Bible is saying. And as a matter of fact, a position of power is not what it is in the Bible. Now, I said this last week. I'm just going to show you a couple interesting things. And I'm talking here tonight out of the Bible. We looked at this last week. I'm going to actually give you some scriptures. Now, Exodus 24 talks about the 24 elders. Uh, no, it talks about the 70 elders. Were you paying attention? Exodus 24 talks about the 70 elders. There were 70 elders in Israel. And when Moses went up the mountain, Mount Sinai, they were at the base of the mountain. Moses went up. He ascended the mountain to meet with God. And when you look at this story, he's up there. The 70 elders are down here. Elders are usually people we think of as having authority. So there's lots of people in the Bible who have authority, but authority is not a position of power. Now, the 70 elders had a role of power. In essence, they were seeing uh, the things they were seeing. These are leaders. They're looking up there. They're seeing Moses go up. They saw God at the top of the mountain and they saw Moses go up there. They didn't go up though. And then it just says a few days later, they helped build a golden calf to worship the people of Israel. First thing I wanna say is calling yourself a leader doesn't mean you're doing what God wants you to lead in. So that's a nasty statement, but the 70 elders were in charge of Israel and they had a power encounter with God himself, which is so crazy yet they still built a golden calf with that memory only a few days old in their head. So that's a hard thing to explain. We would say, well, my heart is different. I don't want that. So power and authority are not the same thing. And we say, what is authority? It's a position of power. It's actually not. So I'm going to just hold on to your horses we're gonna look at what it actually means. As a matter of fact, it is not a position of power. So I wanna just show you in essence what it is. In the Bible, power in a supernatural sense um, is not just what we understand it to be. Power is a gift from God. We don't do anything to deserve it when it comes. That's the biblical version of it. We don't earn it through works or righteousness. It's a gift uh, delivered by a sovereign God using his Holy Spirit. So in the Bible, when you talk about power, supernatural power, it always comes in the good way, in the sense that if it's God's power, it's brought to you by the Holy Spirit. And it's the manifestation of God's love for us that suddenly appears from the invisible realm into the visible realm. That's power of a supernatural sort. We live in a day where power almost looks like an assault on people's lives. Authority is like often mean in our, our culture. And power in the day and age in which we live is very few times reflected of God's love. That's actually what it is. It's a charisma or a charism or a grace, which means love, it's supposed to be. And it's temporary. Now this is important to catch. It's a fleeting vapor that appears for a moment, lingers, and then is gone without a trace. That's the biblical version of power. Is that what you think? When we think of authority, we think a position of power. That is not what supernatural power is whatsoever. It's temporary and the kingdom of God cannot function without it. It's good. It's meant for good. 
But this is the difference. Authority, in the Bible, authority is often translated power, but they aren't the same word at all. And we could never, if you're getting around very godly people sometimes, I've been around some really well-known, well-established, godly people. Uh, I am a pastor's kid, and my dad would take me even growing up, and I got around people that there was never an accusation, lived their whole life, and they lived it, and they were above reproach. And I remember being around men and women, and I was like, what on earth is that? It wasn't the person. You could feel something from God in the situation that that person exuded. And you wouldn't be able to, I would say in my mind, that's a supernatural power. But as I look back, there's both power and authority and power comes in a moment. But when you get around these godly people who, when I could be around them, I would feel it and it was constant. So that's not power. They didn't have just in that moment, supernatural power. At times you could see them, but I was around certain people and you would go out for dinner or at a conference and you're like, what is it about these people? It was different. And in the New Testament, power and authority are two different words. And they frequently get translated as if they were one and they're not at all. So I wanna just give you the example of what this is. And then I'm gonna give you some Bible examples. And then I'm gonna, over the next few weeks, just settle this in your heads of how it works and the effect that it has. First step. I'm going to use a name. I don't like using names. And he's gone home to be with heaven. I went out for dinner with Reinhard Bonnke with my dad. I was a teenager. I could, I, the waiter came to our table when he went up to the buffet shaking <laughs> at the waiter. Didn't know who he was. And he said to me, who is that man? Shaking the waiter. I want you to know that it's not because of supernatural power per se showed up. He had an authority. That is quite a statement to say. I sat there and he said, all I could say is, I said, well, he's a well-known pastor. He said, you're a private, he's a general. He was shaking around this man. Not because the man was mean, he's super kind, but you could feel something from the Lord in who he was. And it didn't go away. It was kind of always there. So I just want to share, there's two words in the Greek, dunamis and exousia. Dunamis means uh, in the Greek, uh, where we get our root word for dynamite. It's explosive power that explodes in a moment. The whole point to dynamite is, it's not always a chain reaction that keeps going. The sun is constantly uh, heating. Dynamite explodes in a moment and then it's over in a, a split second. So our concept of dynamite is the concept where you get the word supernatural power from. Charisma power comes in a moment. It's a gift. It's made that way. It's made. You pray. It comes. It activates. It's there. It changes something and it's gone. Authority is not that. Dunamis is power. And the root word is dynamite for our sakes. It's a, the explosive presence of God. And in a moment, that thing shows up and then it's gone. And when it arrives, it changes something. Exousia is completely, entirely not that. It's totally different. And it's supernatural. So you would get around godly people and you would sense it all the time maybe with them. But it wasn't that. It's not exousia is different than dynamite. So this is really important to catch. Power, it's the rule of government or God's government. It's an authority that can command submission. It's very important to notice this. Many times in the Bible, exousia is, is just translated out as power. They don't distinguish between the two, but they do completely different things. When it should be translated authority, it probably is meant to be by the biblical writers so explosive power is dynamite. And just remember, dynamite doesn't just keep exploding unless you keep igniting more. Exousia stays. Staying power is exousia. Jesus had power and authority. He had both. And at points, you can actually tell in the Bible 
different miracles, different things he did came from one different sources. One came from exousia, one came from power. Some healings that it would actually say they work together to get the job done. Now, I want to just say this. God wants power and authority to work together in your life to get the job done on earth as it is in heaven. And we are his subjects. We are part of the kingdom of God. So you can activate and access this. It's very simple, but it works in a way that in real life, if you come up with this, you won't even be able to tell. You can sometimes tell that guy feels very, very godly. But in a moment, you don't know which one is working. So I want to just, talking points here, I want to just say a few things. I'll give you a couple examples, and we're going to look at this for a few weeks. Luke chapter 4, a group gathered in a home, and Jesus delivered an incredible teaching and a miracle. The Bible says that many leaders actually were in this house, and they had illnesses, and there was power there to heal them. It doesn't say any of the leaders were actually healed, but it says there was a young man that was let down through the roof. He was healed. Luke 4, 32 says, And they were astonished, the leaders, in the house at his teaching, for his word was with authority. And Luke 4, 36 says, Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves. Uh, and it says, What a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the demonic spirits, unclean spirits, and they come out. So the first thing to notice about authority is your rule over darkness doesn't come from power, it comes from authority. That is a mouthful and you've got to catch this. So you can have all the um, dunamis in the world, but dunamis doesn't dislodge darkness. Authority does. And it's really important to say the leaders in that moment noticed he had both. So he was able to do things that we're not able to do. But you are able to do it. It's very important to see. When darkness comes into the earth, you need both. To get the job done, God sends both down. And the rod and the staff, the shepherd, the, the, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's what both are. One is the rod, one is the staff. The staff to kind of shepherd the sheep with is authority. The rod is power to drive away uh, these different things. So that's exactly Old Testament, New Testament. So I want to just start to highlight for you the difference in these two things. So authority, exousia, um, which one is it? It's a supernatural authority. Now, this is not a position in a church. Now, a lot of people get hung up on this. Now, this is going to be, please hear me. Some people think, if you take my position away at church, you're taking my authority away. If we don't have a role, a role equals a position. Biblically, there's no position that gives you authority. So that's not true. Some people say to me, you know, if I'm not an usher at the church, or I'm not a greeter, or I'm not put in a position of authority, my authority to tell people what to do comes from the position that you're put into. And I hate to tell you, this is so strange. This is so confusing to people. The one doesn't equal the other. Authority has nothing to do with position. I've met very godly men who have no position God positions you for authority. And it has nothing to do with what you're let to do, so to speak, in a church. So important notes to make. Luke 10, 19, Jesus said, I have given you the power to trample on snakes and scorpions and destroy the enemy's power. Nothing will hurt you. Jesus gave in this moment the disciples exousia, not dunamis authority. So I have given you the exousia to trample on snakes and scorpions and to destroy the enemies. And this is interesting what Jesus said, dunamis. 
nothing will hurt you. Satan lost authority when he fell from heaven. And he still has power, but he lost authority. Exousia is greater than dunamis. The authority that Jesus gave the disciples was to trample on the power, not authority, of the enemy. And the only authority Satan had is the authority Adam and Eve gave him in the garden. He had lost it, and he got it back. The enemy rules by power, not authority. So that doesn't mean you stop asking for power. You just want to seek authority as well. And when the evil day comes, I'm going to stop here. And this is very important. This is going to take me weeks to walk through this. The enemy has power. And when the, Jesus said, um, put on the full armor of God so that you may stand in the evil day. You don't need more power when the day, the evil day comes. Ephesians talks about the full armor of God. You need authority. And you need to have a heightened sense of this. It doesn't mean you stop asking for power. You just need God to give you authority when an evil day comes. Now, a lot of us are like, don't stop talking about evil day. Don't talk. I'm just telling you, if it hasn't come at some point in your life, it's going to come. There's and there's times where it comes individually. There's times where it comes in a country. There's kind, to, uh, it's kind to say this. And I know this sounds strange. It's when you have authority, you can have authority and be kind. I want you to know it's kind for me to give you this. We think of authority and think mean. Authority is kind. Godly authority is kept for kind people in the kingdom. You can stand in the evil day. God wants you to stand. But it's not mean for me to tell you this. It's kind. And it elicits sometimes a very strange how authority works is kindness. Love is kind. Jesus said, if I don't have love and I have all the power in the world, it doesn't work the way God intends it to work. God wants you to work for the kingdom and God gives you authority and you can remain kind. I think it's a trick of the devil or it's a sign of the times that we think authority it, to rule is to be unkind. I'm telling you, it's the opposite. The, shep the good shepherd is kind to the sheep. God wants to be kind for you. I want to just say this as I close. You can't be comforted without when you resist his kindness and authority. His authority is kind. He comforts you with it. And it, it's up to you in a way to realize in the evil day, you know, we say evil day, you say, you know, no way. I don't want anyone to talk about an evil day. I want you to know God is got kind authority. He is loving kindness incarnate, Jesus. And that's not a technique. When people just drive you nuts or are mean or don't listen to you. Oftentimes, as human beings, we start increasing the volume, getting meaner in matter. That doesn't say anything about authority. It says everything about you or the person that's doing that to you. Many times, authority is not broke by, you don't have authority by breaking someone's will down. I don't want you to know, Jesus laid down his life for you and me and he was given all authority when he did that. God wants to get you to where he has for you to go. And he wants you to work not with authority and power. He wants you to have authority and power. And it has nothing to do with have a, having a position that some human being puts you in. What people will do to you is not what God will do to you. 
what God does for you is special. Arrange it in your mind differently. And I'm going to leave you with this right now because you have to let this settle to get to where we're going next week and the week after. Kindness is what authority looks like. You can have great authority and be very kind. And that's the thing that the world doesn't look like anymore. When we talk about being ready to stand in the evil day, you wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't have to be mean to people, but against principalities and power. Being kind to each other doesn't mean we're tolerant of the devil coming against us. God wants to get us to where he has for us to go and he'll get us there in a way that will trample snakes and scorpions. But it doesn't mean we trample each other. We have a hand that's nail scarred that comes from Jesus. He'll show us the way to use authority and power to get the results that look like him. I want the results that look like what Jesus can do. What Jesus can do for you isn't just set the captive free, but do it through you and me in a way where we're nice, <laughs> we're kind, we work together. The rules of engagement in the kingdom of God, the power, the authority that he gives us, our rules of engagement are not to look the way the world looks, not to misuse or misstate what's been said to us. What you're actually saying is, and I wanna just say this as I close, Jesus said these words, your kingdom come, your will be done. What he actually is saying here, again, kingdom here is interesting. What he's actually saying is, let your exousia come and let the aftermath of that exousia be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's the word. We often say power. He says kingdom. Many times in the Bible when he says kingdom, it's actually exousia. It's a supernatural kingdom. What does the kingdom of God look like in you? Nice, kind. I can get up on church, in church and say, praise the Lord and the Lord puts something in my heart and it comes out of me nice. That's authority. It's not, I'm the boss, do what I say, I got the position. You don't have the position when you're doing that. There isn't a position in here. The position is Jesus is on the throne and that puts my life in a different position. I can speak out of authority and authority isn't speaking louder. What gets us there, we'll look at next week. God's got a position for you, but it's not a position. It's a, it's a place that he wants to put you. We'll talk about that in week, next week. You are not weak when you do this. Power and authority, this type of authority is not weak. Don't let the devil lie to you. Authority can be kind and strong and look that way because of the results of the kingdom are working for you in Jesus' name. Lord, we take your abundance today. Your grace, your goodness, your kindness, and your authority works and looks a certain way. It works for me nicely. Jesus is not mean to his body. He equips it and he wants us to use everything. He glues us together through the Holy Ghost. He brings power and he brings a special authority that looks a lot like his character. And that's how he leads us. In Jesus' name, may the blessing of God come to everyone. May we take it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.